Honestly, I miss my mom the most. And sometimes I cry whenever I miss her. Tell That's... me about your mom. What does she look like? What does she... She's very pretty. She's not like me. I'm not like my mom. She's very pretty. And uh, she's very honest. The most difficult part was leaving home. When I left home, uh, you wouldn't believe like uh, there, I had like 150 people more than that on railway station leaving me saying goodbye and saying goodbye to those number of those amount of people is hard. So I was like, I'm not going forever. <laughs> I'm gonna come back in eight months. It's fine. I have a very very special relationship with my grandmother. Mother at, at her best health. You can see her. She has a full face. Oh, she's glowing, and this is. The last month, I left India and came to Canada. She's doing a victory sign for me, and this is her. My name is Amandeep. I'm from India, Punjab. I have been here in Canada for um, from almost like two years, and I'm studying in a paralegal program. Uh, I'm in my last semester of this program. So um, I work on the weekends. I work at grocery store as a cashier. So I don't have a time to like spend with my family on the weekends and just. I'm with my family only on the weekdays, my school and my family on weekdays, and my weekends I spend on my work. I live with my first cousin. We are only four people, my cousin, her husband, and her daughter. So my mom was very concerned. She doesn't want to send me like here being alone. And when my cousin asked my mom that she's gonna take care of me, and she's here with her family. That, that, at that time, my mom agreed to send me here. Otherwise, she would have never let me to come to Canada. Uh, I'm Babhav. Uh, I'm from Gwalior, India. And I came here in Canada in 2018. I'm currently pursuing business administration marketing. And I also work here in McDonald's, uh, like in Missaga. I live in Missaga right now. My flatmates are so very, very nice. They all do parties on weekends. So at house, like we don't go to clubbing and all. So my mother is like, when I call her on weekends at night, so my mother is like, are you drunk? And I'm like, no. Why Why? Why, why do you think like I'm drunk? <laughs> so she's like, it's okay, you can tell me. And I, I'm like, I know I can tell you, it's it's okay. So I try to call her like very often. So it's uh, it's like, if I don't call her, I feel anxious, you know? I feel like uh, she'll be worrying about me. My name is Abhishek. I'm a Sheridan student. I've been in Canada for three years as of now, and I'm pursuing an advanced diploma in electromechanical engineering technology. Be belonging to a, a Southeast Asian family, uh, Every, I think every Southeast Asian student would know that their parents would pour their heart and life into their child's uh, success. During the first two years, life sort of became monotonous for me. I would go to school, go to work, come back home. And whenever I got time, I used to sleep. So my mother used to call me in the evening. And I remember, uh, I would tell her that uh, I just came from the college and I'm going to work. I'd tell her about the day, she'd ask about the weather. But I would never tell her that when I was coming back from the college to my home, I would be crying all the way back. I would have headphones in my ears, listening to songs, and I would be crying just because I was hungry. And I couldn't spend money because I had to pay fees. And it came at the cost of not having good food or enough food throughout the day. 
even going to the Gurdwara, the Sikh temple we have behind Sheridan, going there mostly every day so I could get some food because they have open food halls as well. And then I used to go to work after having that food and come back to the school in the morning. Uh, it was my first semester and I was coming back from my night shift uh, after 7 a.m. I reached Sheridan about 8 a.m. and I get this phone call from my father. Uh, and uh, I pick up the phone and he says, your grandmother is no more. And uh, it's, I mean, this, the world sort of stopped for me right away. But when I came here, yeah, it was a problem for me, with, like finding for a job. But, like I tried and tried, I struggled a lot. Then I got a job near to my house in Salvation Army thrift store. Those guys were like, okay, we don't care about anything. We care about like, can you do the hard work? And they were like, you need to lift up weight. And I, I didn't tell them that I had a collarbone fracture before I came here. I was so anxious to get a job that I forgot like I had a collarbone fracture. I need a rest of one year. So I was like, okay, I will do whatever I think. I usually never tell my hardships. Like whenever I face something, whenever I feel bad, I never share with my mom. I never tell her because I don't want to make her like sad just because of me. Uh, uh, my sister came last year, came with an added responsibility, so I had to take extra care of her. And I love that. Uh, she is one year younger than me. And next uh, week, my mother is coming to Canada. And she is so excited about it. Epic spreads. New York, California, Illinois, and Connecticut. All On this Friday night, closed, canceled. So students, fine. these are extraordinary times. I would like to thank all of you for your patience and understanding as we navigate through the unprecedented challenges surrounding the COVID-19 I have indeed. Yeah, we can hear you now. That's great. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Thank you. Welcome, by Bob. It's nice to see you. It's been a while, eh? We were wondering about was how are you doing right now? Right now I'm in Waterloo. So that was my last semester for diploma. When we had a last conversation, I've taken more credits now. And I'll be graduating with a bachelor's and diploma, both of those. Hi, Alia. Oh, okay. There, oh, there you we are, go. Shaikh. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. I'm working in a consultancy company as a mechanical designer. Okay. I graduated last year. Yeah. I remember you said last time that your mom was visiting. I came here in like August 2018. So it's pretty overwhelming now since I like, when I look back at it, like it's already been three years. It looks like yesterday I came here and like so many things have changed in my life since I came here. I was in Mississauga, everything was going pretty well. Uh, I lived there one year and then the pandemic came. My father was pretty okay though. My father was like, you're a big man. <laughs> I know you'll do, work out something. But my mother, oh my God, she was so stressed. <laughs> she was like, uh, what are you gonna do? And she was stressing me out. She was like, we told you to study in India. <laughs> Why didn't you do that? I was like, 
Now is not the time, mom. Come on. This is the point where you say everything's gonna work out. Have faith in God. <laughs> I'm not gonna die in this pandemic. I mean, like, <laughs> that is so stressful, yeah. And everyone, everything went to online. Everything shut down. So I was like, uh, okay. So I was just like living there in Misaga. And then I finally went back home last year in uh, July. When I came back here in Canada, my friend w wanted me to stay with him. Pretty sweet apartment. Like it's not too big, but like I think like if we decorate it more, it's gonna look really, really good. It's a, it's a great change now. I completed my studies, I graduated. I wasn't planning to go further. Like I thought like this is life that I have to do this jobs here. Like I was working at the grocery store and I was like, everyone does this. This is all what I can do now. But my cousins, they motivated me and they were like, okay, go for your exam, licensing exam. I got my paralegal license. So I, I started working at another law firm. So I quit my other job and I have a new job right now. I am 24 years old now and uh, just uh, pushing through life harder than ever. So one thing which I realized, you know, I used to struggle with this idea that I was missing home, I was missing that homely feeling which, I, which still I couldn't gather in Canada after all these years after graduating, after going through the most of the pandemic, I would say. I still couldn't gather that feeling at the bottom of my heart that this is home. I still remember I started working from a factory and today I'm working as a mechanical designer within three to four, four years. But the more I think about this, the more I realize that I was blaming Canada before for this feeling that I have, that this homesick feeling and this feeling that uh, I, am, I have to deal with all these stresses and responsibilities and all these obligations and working full time and maintaining your expenses. The more I thought about this, the more I realized that it's not Canada, it's my transition from teenage to being an adult. Previously, I thought like after completing my education, I'm gonna go back home, but that's not worth it, to be honest. So uh, next year, I'm graduating from Sheridan College. And after that, I'll apply for my PR. Like I'll apply work permit, I'll work here, and I'll apply for PR. And then I would love to buy a house here. Yes, my plan is to stay here and to become a lawyer in this country. And then I can grow further. Once I like settle here, get my permanent residence. And I often underestimate myself. I'm like, I haven't done much, but when I talk, when I am deep motivated, when I am stressed out, I usually cry out to my mother and father and they remind me of the progress I have made. 